The Pokemon TCG's biggest mistake ever was Slowking from Neo Genesis. Pokemon cards have been created, tested, and designed at Creatures Incorporated since 1996. However, Wizards of the Coast was the original publisher for the English cards, which began releasing in 1999. The early days of competitive Pokemon TCG revolved around trainer cards. Although Pokemon like Hitmonchan, Scyther, and Electabuzz had caused the meta to heavily favor basic Pokemon over evolution Pokemon, these cards almost seemed fair compared to the trainers available at the time. In today's game, trainer cards have several subcategories, like Pokemon tools and supporters, which allows the designers to balance them accordingly. However, the Pokemon TCG debuted with all trainers created equally, at least that was the plan. Let's take a modern card like Professor's Research. This has an incredibly powerful effect, but it's balanced by the supporter rule. Compare this to Professor Oak from Base Set, and there's one small difference. No supporter rule. This means players could and would play multiple Professor Oaks a turn, but it doesn't stop there. Cards like Computer Search, Energy Removal, and Gust of Wind were included in just about every competitive deck. Comparing these to their modern day equivalents, you can see that each of these have been drastically powered down. You could play four copies of a card like Computer Search, which would be limited to one per deck with the modern day printing, or use multiple energy removals in the same turn with a 100% success rate, something you'd need great luck to do with today's version. I wonder if they knew just how powerful these trainer cards from base set would be, since in the next two sets, Jungle and Fossil, we were only given a handful of new trainers, none of which held a candle to the base set staples. Base set did include Lass, which could be seen as a preventative measure for the balance problems with trainers, but since Lass removed all trainers from both players' hands, this would make the game go from 100 to 0, leaving neither player with many options since the game so heavily relied on trainers. Don't get me wrong, Lass was included in some decks at the time, but players weren't eager to slow the opponent down at the cost of losing their trainer cards as well. Taking note of the powerful trainer cards that often overshadowed the Pokemon themselves, Creatures began creating more cards to combat the overuse of these trainers. After a lull in strong trainer cards from Jungle and Fossil, the Team Rocket expansion brought with it two game-changing cards. Rocket's Sneak Attack offered direct trainer card removal at no cost of your own cards unlike Lass. This card single-handedly changed the way the game was played. Every good deck relied on trainer cards to play the game, so it quickly became a race of who could win the coin flip and find enough Rocket's Sneak Attacks to render the opponent's hand useless. Oh yeah, and there weren't any rules about not using trainer cards on the first turn of the game either so you could just lose to this strategy before ever getting a turn. Not as quick as Rocket's Sneak Attack, but even deadlier, was Dark Vile Plume. Released in the same set, if Sneak Attack wasn't enough taking away your opponent's most important trainer card, Dark Vile Plume completely restricted trainers just by its presence on the board. Three-time world champion Jason Klasinski is quoted saying that the Team Rocket set permanently altered the game due to these two cards, and documents the nosedive in fun, fairness, and player interaction the Pokemon TCG took during this time. If you have questions like, how could it get any worse, and I thought this video was about Slowking, not to worry, that part's next. Imposter Oak's Revenge, Rocket's Sneak Attack, The Rocket's Trap. By late 2000, there were so many ways to cripple your opponent's hand that if you had lost the opening coin flip, you could consider yourself lucky if your hand still had any cards in it by the time your first turn began. That's why when the Neo Genesis expansion debuted at the end of that year, players breathed a collective sigh of relief. Jason Klasinski, three-time world champion. Pokemon Gold and Silver introduced a new generation of Pokemon for the first time with the TCG following shortly after. Neo Genesis debuted Darkness and Metal-type Pokemon cards and Energy cards, Pokemon tools, and plenty of Gen 2 Pokemon, like Feraligator, Heracross, and Zatu. As tradition still stands today, Japan releases their TCG sets ahead of the rest of the world, 
So American players in the despised base through gym format could look ahead to what might change with this new set. New types were added to the game for the first time. Metal Energy and Darkness Energy were new special energy cards, each with their own positive and negative effects. Metal Energy on a Pokemon like Steelix, with the help of the new Goldberry, made for quite a tanky Pokemon, and Darkness Energy helped already powerful attacks, like Sneasel's Beat Up, become even stronger. In the midst of new Pokemon, new types, and new mechanics, there was one card that stood to save the game, Cleffa. This 30 HP Pokemon with no damaging attacks would go on to be revered as one of the best Pokemon cards ever printed amongst competitive players. Its baby Pokemon rule could protect you from aggressive strategies, and its Eek attack circumvented hand control cards from dominating the game. Looking back to Less, this card was now the preferred means of trainer control, because when paired with Cleffa, you could just eek yourself back up to a 7 card hand, negating the negative effect of Lass. However, there was one card overlooked from Japan's first gold and silver set that would unexpectedly destroy the English format. Slowking, the new evolution of Slowpoke, premiered its first card in the TCG. Like Rocket's Sneak Attack, Vile Plume, and even last before it, this new Slow King was designed to control the use of trainer cards. Slow King's Mind Game's Poke Power would allow you to flip a coin to negate your opponent's trainer cards every time they played one, as long as Slow King was your active Pokemon. While a 50% chance to stop your opponent from playing a trainer card could be very strong, this card would be awkward in the active position since its only attack is very weak. With an ability that only works in the active and activates on a coin flip, a hefty retreat cost, and an underwhelming attack, this card was not poised to see any competitive play. This all changed when Wizards mistranslated Slowking for the English release and declined to issue a correction for it. A grave mistake for the competitive integrity of the game, Slowking's Mind Game's Poke Power was printed without the very important line, you may use this power if Slowking is your active Pokemon. Without this very important line in the Pokemon power, players were free to establish up to four Slowkings on the bench and force their opponents through up to four coin flips for mind games whenever they played a trainer card. With one mind game's Pokemon power, you would flip one coin every time your opponent played a trainer, which would mean approximately 50% of your opponent's trainers would be completely negated. On average, two Slow Kings would flip at least one head 75% of the time. Three Slow Kings would flip at least one heads 87.5% of the time, and four Slow Kings would flip at least one heads 93.75% of the time. Without the line restricting this Pokémon power to the active or anything else restricting it to once per turn, the Slow King quickly became the centerpiece of the Pokémon trading card game. Slowking was optimally paired with Murkrow, another broken card from Neo Genesis, except this one didn't need a mistranslation to ruin the format. After establishing multiple Slowkings to all but guarantee your opponent would not get to play the game, you would then use Gust of Wind to bring a Pokemon to the active and use Murkrow's mean look to trap it there forever. Sound familiar? Unlike modern day lock decks, Murkrow only had to use the mean look attack once and it would carry on using feint attack until you took all 6 prize cards or your opponent conceded. The Pokemon TCG community suffered due to Wizards of the Coast's stubbornness to ban or errata cards, with many translation and printing errors occurring and other cards like Sneasel and Murkrow deserving consideration for bans as well. No cards were ever banned from the standard format under Wizards of the Coast, but Slowking was eventually banned from the new modified format in late 2002, after it had already dominated for years, including winning two age divisions at the 2002 World Championships. It's easy to cry broken at every new powerful card or tricky strategy that trumps our deck, but just be happy TPCI isn't playing mind games with us like Wizards of the Coast did with Neo Genesis Slowking.